Well, it's a Sunday. Decided I'd head out to the woods today, try and do a little bit of shed hunting. Um, I think it's probably a little bit too early for it yet. It's mid to late February. Um, it's possible the deer are dropping antlers right now, but I've been walking around for about two hours now and I haven't seen much. But um, with the way the snow is, it's kind of hard to tell. Um, you know, whether you're, you're following a buck or a doe, it's hard to make out the tracks at this point, but did a lot of walking in, or got a lot of walking in. <laughs> Kicked up a couple of uh, rough grouse. It's nice to see a few of those still around. Um, for those of you that don't know what a grouse is, it's kind of the, um, I guess, the woods dwelling chicken of the north. Um, it tastes pretty good. It's been a couple years since I shot one, but um, the season's closed now up here, so I didn't bother to try and chase those down. But it's about noon now, getting kind of hungry, so I thought we'd stop and get a fire going down there and cook up some venison ribs. I've never tried those before and I've always wanted to. And I figured, you know, midwinter is probably a great time to get out here and light a fire and try them for the first time. So that's what we're going to do today. I believe this was the doe that I took off of this property earlier this year. I think it was early November. Uh, but the uh, rib cage looked really good on her. I didn't, you know, ruin too much of it with the uh, shot from the bow. So I figured I might as well save it and give it a try because everyone's always talking about how good they are over a fire. So we're going to try it and I'll uh, let you know how it tastes. While I'm letting those ribs cook, I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about my gun of choice that I got out here with me today. This is a mid to late 60s Savage 24H DL. So it's a Model 24, Series H, and the DL stands for Deluxe. Um, it's a combination gun. It's a 22 mag uh, over a 20 gauge. And I just picked it up. I've kind of wanted one for a while. It's got a walnut stock on it. Uh, the gold trigger 
and then the I guess they call it like a satin chrome receiver um, but it's just a, it's a silver receiver um, and that was all kind of part of the deluxe package um, like I said it's chambered in 22 mag over 20 gauge and the shotgun barrel is a fixed choke and I believe it's a full choke I haven't fired it yet I was kind of hoping to take care of that today when I was out here but didn't really come across anything that I could um, take a shot at the only thing that's open up here in Wisconsin right now is rabbit that's open until the end of the month and then other than coyote hunting is kind of done until the fall um, but I guess you know that doesn't mean we can't pop off a round or two just to test it out while we're out here um, after I picked it up from the gun store I went through it and oiled everything cleaned it all out pretty well and the barrels were filthy the 22 mag barrel had so much lead in it that you could hardly uh I guess lead fouling hardly see the rifling in the barrel but it cleaned up really nice um, I think I maybe would have preferred to get the 22 over 410 version um, the 22 mag over 20 gauge I mean the 22 mag as far as I'm concerned is kind of a it's a weird in-between caliber it's a little bit too big for squirrel you know kind of too small for a coyote or something like that um, not that it wouldn't work but there's better options out there but I figured you know if I was out here and saw a rabbit or you know maybe a squirrel I'd try and take a shot with the 22 mag barrel and again if I saw a rabbit or something like that try out the 20 gauge but um, with those grouse out here and I mean typically in fall too this is a pretty squirrel squirrel heavy environment so I kind of thought that this would be fun to have walking out here you know it's like having two guns in one obviously um, but that's not really why I bought it like I said it's kind of just one of those odd savage pieces that's more of a collector than it is a shooter um, I figured that this one's probably right around a 1966 or 67 version um, I think 67 was the last year that they offered the um, deluxe package with the chrome receiver um, and it must be pre-68 because it does not have a serial number on it um, and I was looking for you know the typical Steven Savage date codes and I didn't see a stamp on it anywhere I might have to take a look a little bit closer but like I said my guess would be probably somewhere in the uh, you know mid to late 60s but it's a fun gun just to carry around um, I've been enjoying having it out here today I'm just very interested in firearms and even if I'm not going to be using them I just kind of like to take them out for walks but just a quick overview of today's gun of choice and now I think I gotta get back to tending these ribs they're starting to uh, drip a little bit I don't want them to burn So here's my thoughts on my first time cooking venison ribs. I don't know how they'd be any other way, but over the fire, I'm definitely going to do that again. Um, I think altogether, I'm going to stop throwing my rib cages to the coyotes because that was really good. I uh, definitely have a lot to learn in the way of cooking them, but tell you what, just uh, putting some salt on them and then doing them over a fire like that 
to me, it kind of tasted just like bacon. Um, you know, obviously the tallow or the grease fat, whatever you, you want to call it off of a white tail is going to be a lot different from pork or beef, but, um, it's got a lot of the, uh, I guess, same properties. I don't know what the right word is, but, um, definitely going to try it again. You know, they kind of say if, uh, something tastes good, it can't be good for you. Um, kind of starting to think venison ribs are terrible for you, but, <laughs> uh, they, uh, that was good. Yeah. There's no other way to put it. I'm going to do it again. Things I would have done differently. Um, would have taken the membrane off of, or at least tried to take the membrane off of the front and back side of the rib cage because you're kind of fighting that as you're biting into it. So you're pulling chunks of meat out of uh, the middle of that membrane. So if you could get that off of there before you cook them, definitely be worth it. Um, and then just, I would say, trim as much tallow fat off of them as you can before you throw them over the fire. But um, as you saw from the video and the pictures, I think those cooked up great. They weren't burnt and they were done all the way through. Um, I think you can kind of tell when they're done. I mean, first of all, it's a, it's a really thin piece of meat, so you don't really have to worry about undercooking it. But um, you can tell when they're done because they're they're sizzling like crazy. And, you know, the uh, it almost looks like the marrow is starting to come out of the bones, out of the ends of the bones. So, um, yeah, great first time cooking venison ribs. We'll be doing that again. All right, guys, my fire is just about out. I'm all packed up, getting ready to grab the Savage and load that back up, and we'll head on out of here. So uh, thanks for hanging out with me in the woods today. Had a great time. I'm sure we'll do it again soon. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next one. Thank you.